How's everybody doing today, by the way? I, just, I mean, it's, it's been a long week, not just for our community, but also for our country. And uh, sometimes it, it can be, well, not just disillusioning, but sometimes disheartening. Um, but we have reason to hope. We have Shabbat. We have each other. And we have a dream of something greater that we can build together. In our Torah portion, believe it or not, probably has something to say about that too. This week's Torah portion, Vayigash, delivers an exhilarating conclusion to the saga of the Joseph story. Joseph, who now as viceroy of Egypt, stands prepared to reveal himself to the very same brothers who sold him into slavery more than 20 years earlier. But it's not just Joseph's story that reaches its apex in our parsha this week. The story of Joseph's older brother Judah also comes to fruition in this week's parsha. Before Joseph reveals his identity to his brothers, it's Judah who takes center stage all the children of Jacob were demoralized as their younger brother, Benjamin, who stood accused of stealing the viceroy's goblet, was about to be imprisoned. But it was Judah who interceded on behalf of his younger brother, even volunteering to serve as a slave in Benjamin's stead. Now this from the very same man who came up with the idea to sell his brother into slavery oh, about 20 odd years ago. And given this somewhat impressive turnabout, it's fair to wonder what happened? What transformed Judah, the reckless, selfish boy who sold his brother into slavery for eight pieces of silver into this intrepid, self-sacrificing man who's willing to go become a servant in order to save his brother? To answer that question fairly, we actually have to go back before this parsha to the moments immediately after Judah hatches his plan to sell Joseph. When Judah and his brothers return to Jacob without Joseph, they don't come empty-handed. They bring a coat one that's been torn and dipped into animal's blood. And in explanation, they only offer Jacob two words. Hakerna. Do you recognize this? Jacob fills in the details, inferring that his favorite son Joseph had been torn to shreds by a wild animal. But the story, of course, doesn't end there, and Here's the part where things sort of get really Jerry Springer on us. A few chapters later, we find Judah making trouble once again in one of the more lurid stories that our Torah has to offer. Judah refuses to allow his son's, well, his two eldest son's widow, Tamar, to marry his youngest son, Shetach which is sort of this violation of this ancient idea that if a widow has, well, let me phrase that, if a husband dies, the widow has the right to marry the younger son so that she has protection uh, in a world that wasn't necessarily kind to women at the time. But Ju Judah doesn't allow this to happen. And so unable to marry and bereft of any protection that comes with marriage and bereft of any inheritors, Tamar takes matters into her own hands by seducing Judah in disguise and taking his staff and signet ring from him before becoming pregnant with his son. I told you, we're getting Jerry Springer. Once Judah learns that his eldest son's widow had become pregnant, Judah threatens to kill Tamar until she produces his signet ring and his staff along with two words to remind Judah of his errant deeds. Hakerna, 
Do you recognize this? Our Torah teaches that indeed, Judah did recognize it, but he also recognized something something else. And Tamar's actions don't only just shame the young Judah into an admission of guilt, they force him to reconsider all of his decisions for the very same question that Judah asked his father earlier, Hakerna, do you recognize this? Would be the very same question that Tamar would ask Judah. And indeed, it's not really a question that's meant for coats or signet rings or staffs. It's a question that we're meant to ask about ourselves. It's a question that demands accountability for our choices. When Judah chooses to sell his brother into slavery, do you recognize this would have reminded him of his responsibilities to his younger brother? And when Judah chooses to deny Tamar her rights as her son's widow, do you recognize this would have reminded him of his responsibilities to her? And when Judah later threatens Tamar's life, it is only her question, do you recognize this, that ultimately forces Judah to confront a tragic truth, that he's not the man he claimed to be because his actions didn't live up to the values he professed to cherish. The question's a mirror. It forced Judah to look at himself for who he really was. And so too can it be our mirror. It's a question we can ask ourselves. It's a question that demands us to be accountable for the choices we make. And so when we pound impatiently on our horns at the first hint of traffic, do you recognize this? Reminds us of the patience that we claim to value. When we rush out these doors toward dinner without saying hello to the people we haven't met before, do you recognize this? Reminds us of the warmth and inclusiveness that we claim to treasure. When we invalidate or disregard others because they look different or they act different or they sound different or they believe differently than we do, do you recognize this? Reminds us of the open-mindedness and the tolerance we claim to possess. Whenever we fail to live up to our values, do you recognize this? Is a question that forces us to confront a tragic truth that sometimes we're not the people or the congregation or the nation that we claim to be because our actions don't live up to the values that we profess to cherish. But the story of Judah doesn't end with his failures and neither does ours. Judah uses the mirror he has been given to fashion a new path, one that sees him in this parsha become the hero instead of the villain. With each decision, with each choice, Judah can hold up this mirror to himself and say, do you recognize this? And we can do the same. We can demand accountability to the values we profess to cherish as individuals, as a community, and as a nation so that one day we too can say, in fact, yes, we do recognize this, and it's exactly what we hope to see. Shabbat Shalom.